Wonderful. It's good to be back uh, with you all for the, this session on the kingdom of God and thy kingdom come. Uh, I very much appreciated, Rod, your, uh, your talk and your teach with us uh, this morning. Uh, I want to talk uh, in this session, the first session we talked about, if you missed it or you're just joining us now, uh, was on the fact and the truth that I've come to understand through the scriptures and my times with the Lord that the kingdom of God is the only kingdom whose king prefers to be called father and who chooses and desires to address uh, his subjects, so to speak, in a kingdom as sons and daughters. And that when we view uh, the scriptures and our lives through the lens of the heart of the Father, it opens up such a wide uh, expanse of his heart and his pleasure for us that we, we don't view and come to understand God from an earthly point of view. It even says that and how we relate to one another, we, that once we're born again, we no longer view one another from an earthly point of view. And so, and the reality of scripture also says that you, you really won't understand the kingdom until you're born from above, born into the kingdom. But once you've been born again, uh, then you, and, and you understand that you've actually been re reconnected to your father in heaven it gives a whole new understanding and that's that's what even the, the disciples didn't quite understand and get they didn't quite understand uh the new the new way of living with god in person among them they still had this mindset of you know when is your kingdom coming and when will you take over and when will you free us from the romans and jesus goes but we're going to think differently and I need to live among you for a while so that you will actually catch and understand that. And, and in this session, I want my hope and my desire is um, that, and, and I feel sometimes so inadequate um, and so um, short on my ability to communicate the heart of the father. And in, in my prayer time this morning, I felt the father say, oh, I have so much I want to share with my friends. And I just I felt a little overwhelmed by that going, Lord, how can we even communicate well your heart? And he set my heart at ease saying, that's my job, Steve. You just open your heart and give them what you've received and I'll do the rest. And so my prayer right now over all of us, that Father, open the eyes of our heart and our understanding that, that you would, that we would have an encounter with you as our Father, and that we would come to know the expanse and the immeasurable greatness of who you are. As Rod shared, you are the I am. You are so much more than encompassing that we can't even fit into our understanding what that means, and yet you come and bring that to us. So I, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text this morning uh, that we have been meditating in and are talking about is found in Matthew chapter 4, and I want to talk about Matthew 4, 5, and 6. The, the theme, thy kingdom come, is found in Matthew 6, which I find it's very interesting that Jesus didn't start with prayer. He started with culture and lifestyle. Um, but what we find in Matthew chapter 4, and I want to focus on this side of sound of things, that there's a practical reality of the kingdom. And uh, I want to talk about the word come. We find that when Jesus in Matthew 4 arrives on the scene, uh, he, he finds these young men and he says to them, follow me. And in another translation, in the message translation, I, I use the ESV and the message and a number of different, different translations just as I meditate on the word. And, and I, want to, I want to learn and hear from as many angles uh, as possible from what others have received from the Lord. And I found 
in, in the message translation, Eugene Peterson, it says, come, follow me. And I felt that there was a connection between Jesus saying to the disciples, come, and when he says, pray this way, thy kingdom, come. And the point that I want to emphasize or share and release to you, the sound of God's heart that I received in this session is simply this. The Father desires that our relationship with him becomes an effortless union of a father with his children. The Father desires that our relationship with him becomes an effortless union of a father and his children. And I so, Rod, enjoyed, I just love, and I hope you don't mind if I use that and share that in other places, that your children call you Abba. And I, I, I want to encourage you, Rod, um, there, the fact that these, your children called you Abba, I don't think I've ever heard that before. It's so endearing, but it's also, I believe that same prophetic sound that we talked about in our in the first session that I shared, where the father is drawing attention when the ch your children call you Abba, it's just a reflection again in the natural realm, as speaking of the invisible realm, that that's how father, that's how he wants us to relate to him, Abba. And um, and we come to know him that way in a powerful way. He wants. His heart for us is that we walk in union. I, I, I found in my life, in my, in, a, in my marriage with Sylvia, that I, I stopped using the word intimacy. Uh, and I now use the word union as a result of some of the things the Father has shown me. And what we understand about the two words are a little bit different. The word intimacy carries with the thought closeness. And all through the Old Testament, we find that there's an intimacy with God. There's a closeness, but there's a distance. There wasn't actually a, 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 a joining together until Christ came on the scene. And when you become born again, you the scripture actually says that we, we enter into a union with Christ. And so he uses marriage to talk about when couples come together, they're not just being intimate, they become one. It's a union that they have. And so I've come to say this about Sylvia. Uh, if you see Sylvia, you see me. If you see me, you see Sylvia. Does that sound familiar? That's what Jesus said about the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. If you see the Father, you see me. We're, we have because they had a union. And, and what Jesus brought on the scene was the 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 way that he lived with his father was was to him an effortless union and he so wanted that relationship with his disciples I, a little story uh, back going back to father's day uh, i'm a fly fisherman and uh, i when i was uh, church planting uh, one of my best friends owned a sporting goods store and he allowed me to oversee the fishing or and specifically the fly fishing realm. And so for about 15 years, we, we taught people how to fly fish. And I, I just have a real passion for it. And because I have a passion for fly fishing, my boys have a passion for fly fishing. And what I have learned, I my heart as a father is, I want to give them every opportunity to experience the joy and the journey of fly fishing. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So on, on Father's Day, uh, I was given a gift of some money. And so I purchased another fly rod. And I, I enjoy uh, my fly rods. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, my oldest son, John, uh, we, I said to him, uh, hey, let's go out to the side yard. Uh, and I want you to, I want you to feel the, the, the cat, how this rod casts. And so we went out into the side yard of, of the, of our townhouse that we're renting. And it's a long uh, grassy area. And so I said, here, try this rod. And so he put it in his hand and uh, he hasn't fished as long as I have, or as in depth I have, but he's caught the spirit of it. He's caught 
the 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 joy of of learning it and and experiencing it because you can't just learn how to fly fish you have to also take what you're learning and experience it so we're on the side yard and um, I, I said this fly rod has a little different feel than the other one but i want you to try it so as he as he pulls back i see him cast but he extends his arm almost like he's throwing a baseball and the design and whole concept of fly fishing is the rod does the work for you you don't need to you just uh, the the goal is that the rod becomes an extension of your arm there's a union that happens where it, there's a joining together where uh, as you learn to cast you want there to be an effortless rhythm and I, and I and I said to my I said oh that you know he said how did that I said how did that feel and he said well that cast didn't go very well and I said here let me show you so I, I, I held the rod again that in my and I and I said watch this he goes oh it looks so effortless for you and I said now I want you to try that and and he goes oh that one felt really good and then he cast a few more he said, oh that one didn't feel so good and then I said to him this is what I do in my mind when I'm casting. I have this song in my head. La, 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 la. I said, it's like a dance for me. And I've learned that the more effortless I put, in, the less effort I put into my cast, the more I'm relying on the rod to do the work and the casts are beautiful. And when the cast is right, there's just something in my spirit that goes, oh, that's just right. And when the cast is wrong or doesn't go the way I hope, I realize I'm putting too much effort into this. I need to let go and trust that the rod will do more of the work and, and, and where the rod becomes an extension. So my son, John goes, oh yeah, okay, I get it. So he says, you actually sing that in your head? I go, I do sing that in my head. I, because I, it reminds me, because I don't get my casts perfect every time either, even though I've been in it and taught it and, and live it. And I said, it's the same way in the kingdom. The father wants us to be in such union with him that our, our, our walk with him becomes effortless. And when it becomes effort, it may mean that we're trying too hard and we're striving a little and we need to trust our union with Christ in such a way that it, when it connects right, it, we sense that in our spirit. There's, as, as E. Stanley Jones would say, there's a divine yes. Ah, oh, yes, that feels good. And so I, I went into the house and I peeked out the window and, and my son was still, and, and he wasn't fishing. This was on grass. But he wanted to feel that so that when he went out on the river, he wouldn't have to think about the union of fly rod in hand. He would be exploring and seeing the wonder of nature and the thought of, I'm going to catch a fish. And it, it was a wonderful experience. And, and I realized that the natural gives insight into the invisible that that's really the union that the father wants is he wants our relationship to him to be so effortless that we are so one with him that we don't we're not striving but we're trusting that in everything he is going to be doing the work and bringing us along and we will enjoy the fruit of that watch him and me um a great writer when i was in uh bible college uh, in the late 70s, uh, we read a lot of Watchmen Nee. And in one of his works, he said this, that the worker is more important than the work. The worker is more important than the work. He, he shared in, from his experience that the Lord had instructed him that if, the, if you get the worker right, you get the work right. And you can see that in, the, in how Jesus, as he comes on the scene, says to the disciples, follow me, 
follow me. There's a, there's a passage, let me read this passage to you out of uh, the message Eugene Peterson wrote it this way in Matthew 11, 28. And listen for the sound of the Father, because when, when Jesus was calling the disciples, he wanted them to be with him, and he spent three years with them so that they would understand what union that Christ had with his Father looked like, so that they would realize this isn't impossible. I can have the same union with my father that Jesus had with his father because we're brothers and I, I'm watching him do it. It's like Jesus was, was, was telling the disciples, now this is how a good cast feels. This is when you're, when you're walking in the spirit, when you're walking with me, this is how it's done. This is how it looks. This is how it feels. And I want that to be something that, that we walk together over these years so that you, you get that. So here's, here's Eugene Peterson in Matthew 11, 28 and 30 um, in the message. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make a real rest and take a rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Unbound. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Oh, Lord, there's a rhythm to this. Yeah, there is. There is a rhythm to it. Um, the theme, Thy Kingdom Come, is, uh, is, a, is an Anglican theme. In a way, if we use that title, I was uh, watching the Archbishop Just, Justin uh, Webley. Uh, they have a theme. Um, and I, I don't understand the whole framing of it. it. I think it might be between the cross and Pentecost that they, they do a, a series uh, called Thy Kingdom Come. And in it, he interviews faith leaders from all Christian, uh, from all different practices, Catholics and Charismatics and Anglicans and uh, Lutherans and all the different bishops. Uh, and he sits in a chair and he says, he asks this question, what do you mean when you pray, thy kingdom come? What do you mean? And it really struck me. I, I, I won't go into, you can, you can view that, uh, thy kingdom come, Archbishop Webley, and it'll come up on YouTube. And I, I, I don't want to focus on that too much, but the question is so important. What do you mean when you pray, thy kingdom come? What did Jesus have in mind? You know, it's interesting that Jesus, um, the disciples sometimes said to Jesus, Jesus, you're speaking in parables. We don't get it. And Jesus did that because he was wanting them to draw close in. He would say the kingdom of God is like. They're going, hmm. We thought the kingdom was like what we thought. And Jesus came and he said, I want you to think differently. That's why in Matthew 4, he says, repent, turn from your perspective, the way you view things, and turn to me. It was, again, the word, word repent is a prophetic word. It carries more than weep, wail, and, and uh, you know, gnash. It's, I'm calling to you. I want you to think differently. I want you to turn in my direction and observe and see what my kingdom looks like. And then Jesus says this, he says, the kingdom of God is within you. And they're, they're going, how is that even possible? Like I sometimes wonder about that. And so we, we find the word, focus on it again, thy kingdom come. What does that mean? What do, what do I mean when I pray that? Lord, thy kingdom come. And, and the more I, I view it through the heart of the Father, I, I, I came to understand this when, I, when you dissect the word of God 
and you find it, you know, different meanings that the word come doesn't mean I'm at the bus stop waiting for the bus to come. His kingdom, you know, come. Lord, we want your kingdom to come. That, that's almost what the disciples were hoping. Okay, you're here. We want to see what we're hoping for. And Jesus was going, no, no, no. Just bear with me, boys. Follow me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms. And the, the word come is, is multidimensional. It, it says it's begun. It's upon us. It's been made known. We're, we're aware of his kingdom. There's, uh, and, and, and if you would bear with me, uh, it carries also the, the words increase and influence. Uh, remember in Isaiah 9, it says the increase of his government will, will have no end. His kingdom will have no end. And so the word, when he says, pray thy kingdom come, what did Jesus mean of the increase of my presence? And, and the government, as Rod said, uh, when a king, a kingdom has a king, and it's where the king reigns, and it's a realm of, of his presence. So the king has to be present. Of, the, of his presence, there will be an increase, and it will keep growing. And so when Jesus came on the scene, and brought good news of the kingdom, he wasn't just teaching principles of better living or behavior. He was actually saying, I embody this completely. So when we look at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, it, it's not just this is a better way to live. It's actually, this is who I am. This is how I think. This is how sons and daughters in union with their father will live. Now, he's talking to Christians with the Sermon on the Mount. He's not, he's not addressing the unsaved. It says that he took his disciples up the mountain and began to teach them. We, we think he was doing this great preach. But he wanted them to understand that um, my kingdom and the good news is this is what I embody and this is how I want you to live. But I don't want you to strive. I want you to be in union with me so that this becomes the normal way of life for you. And you may not get it right at first, but I have patience for you and I love you and I'm interceding for you. And, and it's how sons and daughters in union with the father will live. This is what the kingdom will look like. And I realize as I, as I pray, thy kingdom come, the increase of your presence, the increase of all of those attributes of Jesus as are, are, are shown in the Beatitudes, that will actually increase in my life. Like an increase in the world, increase in other believers. And the evidence of the kingdom will be the outflow and the fruit of this lifestyle in union with the Father. And, and Jones understood this. He said, if Christ wasn't the kingdom, I would have no hope. But Christ actually was the kingdom, and the kingdom was Christ. That gave me hope, because I watched him, I saw him, I read of how he did things, and that he wanted me and gave me the ability to live that same life. And I, I, I wrote this down once in my journal that my goal and my purpose in life is not to plant a church, not to, um, uh, not to uh, win souls to Christ. Those things are fruits. But my goal and my purpose in life is to be more and more like him. Family likeness. Union. Not a task. Our assignments may change. And as Rod was saying in our prayer time, there were many in transition. And the Father is, always tells us that transition is always going to happen. But union is something that is constant. Joan said it this way when he talked about the unshakable kingdom. He actually used the term running toward. And he found, he said this about the unshakable kingdom. He says, I needed something solid. 
I needed something in the solid to build my life on that I could hold on as an anchor. And I found that the only unshakable place was the kingdom of heaven. All, everything else was shaped. But as I'm in union with my father through Jesus, who is the kingdom, I can be unshakable. And it was that union that he had, that rhythm that he followed, that things didn't work out always the way he wanted in, when he was in India. But there was a, a realigning of his heart constantly, constantly coming back to the Father. Ah, I'm one with the Father. And his goal, uh, as, as I've learned, and, and it's become mine, the resonance of it in my heart with East Stanley Jones is, yeah, my purpose in life is to become more like him. I, I want to strengthen that union. And that's the kingdom for me. And as I do that, the fruit of that, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Um, and, our, and, and I just wrote it this way, our assignments may change as it serves him, not us. And the purpose of our lives is to cause others to look at Jesus to see him, to become united with the Father, just like us. Wow, Rod, you have a settledness in your spirit. What's, how did you get that? Ah, I'm one with the Father, and it's unshakable in me, no matter what happens, no matter what comes. There's something beautiful about that union um, that we have. i tell you a story. Uh, in 2008, uh, we had church planted in the community of Hope back in 1991. And in 2008, we had a, a powerful, wonderful kingdom expression. When we moved to the town of Hope, the Lord said to me, now, Steve, I don't want you to try to be the best church in town. I said, oh, okay. He said, my assignment for you is to raise the level of my presence and awareness in this community. And you will do church. But church, building a church isn't the goal. He said this to me, I will build my church. I want you to raise my awareness. I went, oh. So as I learned this rhythm of God, that it wasn't about how if ever it, it was never about me asking Jesus to join me in the journey, in the task. It was about him inviting me into what he wanted to do and that he, it was his great pleasure to work through my life and the lives of our church and the, and the, and the believers of all of the other churches in town, which we became wonderful friends with uh, in a powerful way. But in 2008, I had an experience with the Lord. He tapped me on the shoulder and he said, now, Steve, I'd like you to run for city council. And I went over my dead body. And he goes, oh, I thought that happened at, at conversion. I thought you died. <laughs> and I went, oh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> my body is dead. I'm not my own. Um, thank you for reminding me. Um, but Lord, I do not want to be in politics. That is not something I've even, that has entered into the mind of, 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 my, of my mind at all. And I said, I, I, I don't want to do that. And he said this, I want to do it. And I said, what do you mean? And this is what I heard. I wrote it and I journaled it. He said, Steve, I want a seat on council, but I just need your body. Because I can't, you know, I need to embody flesh and blood. And so I want a seat in government in the town, and I need you. And I went, oh, well, that's different. You don't want me to have a seat. You want a seat, but you need my body. And I said, well, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm, I, I won't promote myself. I'm, I'm just not that way. I'm not the one that runs up and says, pick me, right? Pick me, you know? And, um, and he said, yeah, you won't need to. And so I said, okay, very reluctantly. And um, I said, this is, a, this is on you, Lord. This isn't on me. This is you wanting to do this. And he goes, yeah, just trust me. And, um, and so uh, I got elected. Didn't put up a sign, didn't do anything. 
and uh, it was it was quite incredible. And I realized in my time on city council, uh, there was a number of things that the Lord wanted me to understand and be aware of that were on his heart. And he also wanted me to understand that he will take me places and do things in me for what is coming. And I, I, I always, it, it really changed my perspective. That the Lord, you know, Paul said it this way in Galatians 2. He said, uh, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But this isn't my life anymore. It's actually, as, I, as, as his kingdom comes to me, and as I read in Matthew of, of, of what he's like, I realize you want others to understand what you're like and what the kingdom of God is like. Um, and it's really not about my life. I, I don't have to try to do the Beatitudes. If, if I try to do it, I, I'm back to that striving, trying to, and the casts just don't feel quite right. But when I'm in sync with the Father and I'm in a rhythm with him and I'm in union with him, it, there's, a, there's an effortlessness that happens. And my time on council was remarkable. He only asked me to do it one term. He said, thank you. Now we're going to go over here. And I'm, I'm learning Romans 8 says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So I want to learn that rhythm of being led. And it's a powerful thing. And I'm, and I'm learning more and more that it's not about whether I get it right or wrong. It's about whether I am looking to him and that what I do and what, I, what he leads me into draws attention to him in everything. To me, that's union. That um, uh, Jesus says uh, in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in the world. Oh, help me understand that. What do you mean by that? And he said, um, and he reminds me through scripture, he says, uh, um, I, I taught the disciples that when they saw me, they saw the Father. I want you to do that too. That when people see you, they see the Father. The attention isn't on you. When they hear your life, see your life, and see the union you have with me, they'll do this. Oh, look at him. Isn't he glorious? Isn't he spectacular? That he could do that through Steve? Look at him. He's a mess without God. Ah, but look at him. Look at Christ. So that they don't see me. They see the Father. You imagine Jesus... Of course, Jesus wanted to draw attention to himself. Jesus didn't want to draw attention to himself. He was drawing attention to the Father. And a, a powerful thing. So I, 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 want to, I want to give you something that, that helps me realign my heart to truth and to faith. When, what, do, what do I mean when I pray, thy kingdom come? I've come to pray it this way. Our Father, so Matthew 6, in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is how I pray. When I, when I hear that, those words, I pray, Abba, I belong to you. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me a continual presence of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Abba, I belong to you. I'm not my own. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I pray this. 
more of you, less of me. Thy kingdom come, more of you, more of your presence, more of your awareness, more of your influence, of the increase of your glory and your greatness would be seen in the earth. More of you, thy will be done, less of me. I adopted that prayer, um, the more of you, less of me, through reading John chapter 3, where John the Baptist John's disciples are saying, you know, we're baptizing and they're baptizing. And John said this, a man can only receive what he's been given from heaven. Only receive what he's been given from heaven. I must decrease. He must increase. He said the bride belongs to the bridegroom. It's not mine. It's his. He must increase. I must decrease. And so when I pray that, I, our Father, hallowed be your name, Abba, it's my reminder that I belong to you, we belong to you, I am in the Father and the Father's in me. That's what holiness, holy is your name, that's what sanctification is, where, where I, I am emptied of who I am, just like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm emptied of who I am. And I'm more aware of his presence. And that draws my prayer to thy kingdom come. More of you. More of you, Papa. More of you, Abba. Less of me. And it, it helps my heart when I'm, I'm fearful, anxious, where the lie of the enemy comes at me. More of you, less of me. Abba, I belong to you. The desire of the Father is that our relationship is an effortless union where it's not effortless. Abba, I belong to you. I and you, you and me. More of you, less of me. I want to trust you, Lord, that you are doing a work. Rod shared a verse of scripture out of Exodus about God, who is the I am. I think it's in verse 17 of that chapter. God says, I promise you that I will deliver you from this bondage of slavery. The God I am, Yahweh, keeps his promises. And Paul said it this way, I am convinced that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. What day? The day of Christ, the day of his glory, his resurrection, he's seated at the right hand of God, he reigns in the heavens until his, the, his enemies are his footstool. Against that day, he will complete in me that which he has started. And I'm, uh, it's unshakable who he is and his promise. And he says, Steve, I just, just keep in rhythm with me. Keep in step. Watch me. Learn me. You'll know how it feels. I know what an anxious heart is like. And I realize I'm not, I'm not in rhythm if I have an anxious heart. Oh, it's not about what I do. It's who I'm becoming. I'm becoming more like Christ. I'm becoming more love. And it's flowing. Lord, let that happen. And, and that's a daily thing for me. Realigning my heart. I bless you with that in Jesus' name. Father, let the increase of your presence be evident among us. As our hearts are turned to you with the desire that we want to live in rhythm with you and in union with you, not just closeness, not just calling to you when we need help, but realizing you are resident, resident Father, Abba. As Rod shared when his his daughter would jump into the pool, Abba. That there would be this unshakable sense that I'm safe, I'm able, because we're together, we're one. That that would be something for Holy Spirit that you would impart to us in the, the feebleness of my words today. Would you make that come alive to us personally, individually, and corporately in the earth? I ask that in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Back to you, Ed. <laughs>